Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 2nd of September 2019 and the time has just gone 10.30 British Summer Time. Um, and it's been a reasonably subdued start, fairly quiet start to the European session. Um, Eurozone equity markets like the DAX and the CAC are slightly higher, uh, but volatility is fairly low. Uh, while the FTSE 100 is doing quite well, uh, but that's largely due to, to the... Uh, move to the downside uh, in the British pound. Uh, volatility is expected to be fairly low today across uh, all financial markets because the US are on holidays as it is Labor Day in the US. Um, the kind of, the kind of big news stories of the past couple of days um, have been, now that, we're, now, that we're, now that we're on the 2nd of September, um, there's been a slight you know, ratcheting up of, um, of, the, of, of, the, of the tensions between the US and China. Um, various different tariffs that were announced came into came into effect on the 1st of September. So um, the United States are, are now are now levying tariffs on 212 billion dollars worth of Chinese imports, and they intend to um, have another impose tariffs on 188 billion dollars worth of Chinese imports between now um, and mid September. Sorry, mid mid December, mid December. So coming up to Christmas. Uh, on the flip side of that, China, um, of the $75 billion worth of tariffs on, on U.S. goods that were, that were announced uh, not too long ago, um, some of those tariffs came into play. So, so the, so the tariffs on oil came into play um, yesterday, uh, early September, September 1st. So things between the U.S. and China have not got a, are, are, are getting worse. But there's still a bit of optimism out there because the, the U.S. and China are due to, are due to have, a, have a meeting, are due to meet to, to discuss trade this month. So the fact that even though um, tariffs are are, um, are increasing, the fact that the both sides are, are, have agreed to meet is seen to be positive, um, and that is part of the reason why there there isn't you know a major sell off um, on equity markets this morning. Um, what else has been going on? We've had some largely spe- largely speaking out of Europe poor, disappointing manufacturing numbers. Um, the we've had the various different man- man- final readings of the manufacturing PMI reports from a number of different Euro, 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 uh, European countries. Uh, the, uh, the the Spanish, the Italian, and the German all came in very much in contraction territory. Um, the the French the French figure came in showing it's a very slight um, uh, growth rate, nothing to 51.1. Anything about 50.0 is, a, is an expansion, so nothing too overly impressive. And the UK reading came in at 47.4, its lowest reading since late 2012, um, so mid to late 2012. So a really good indication of how the uncertainties in relation to Brexit are playing out all across Europe on both sides of the English Channel. Um, I'll take a look now at the week ahead, say the major events of uh, this week. Uh, the week ahead can be found on our website, cmcmarkets.com under insights and then under news and analysis so looking ahead to tomorrow we have a interest rate decision from the reserve bank of australia on tuesday we have our first half figures from restaurant group wednesday we have a raft of the services pmi reports um, from, 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 a, from a countries all around the world on wednesday we have the bank of canada interest rate decision uh, on wednesday we have second quarter figures from slack technologies uh, on Wednesday, we have full-year figures from Danelm Group. Uh, Thursday, we have the second quarter figures from Zoom Video Communications. And on Friday, we have the all-important U.S. non-farm payroll figures. So most likely, uh, the non-farm payrolls will be the highlight of the week in terms of uh, macroeconomic events. Uh, take a look now at the, the major markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. So... I feel like the, the kind of wider trend to our 2019 has been to the upside. And you can see here, despite the fact that we had a very sharp sell-off between late July going into August, we did see seem to have found a bit of a, a bottom floor, a bit of a bottom in around this area here. The market has been pushing higher. We're, uh, we're firmly comfortably above this red line here, the 200 moving average. And we're pressing higher. And we're not too far away from the highs that were achieved in early, early to mid-August. And if you can press on higher from here in the FTSE 100, we could be looking at retesting this area here in around the 7,306 mark. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading up toward this blue line here, 50 moving average, and that comes into play 
uh, and that comes into play in around 7,380 there thereabouts. We can see on a few occasions that that, that, that particular metric acted um, as support and to an extent res resistance not in recent months. And if metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so in the future. But there are obviously no guarantees. But should we go beyond that level, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 7,470. Uh, on the flip side, if, you, if the market does manage to turn over on itself again, and we do fall back below the 200 moving average, the red line just south of 7,200, we could be looking at retesting this, this area here, this zone here, in around 7,050 down to 7,000. We'll take a look now at the, uh, the DAX over in Germany. Similar picture, despite the fact that we've had a very, fairly sharp sell-off, the market seemed to have found a floor, found a bottom in around this area here. In, in, and the time frame will be kind of mid-August. We have been pushing higher recently, but what, what separates the DAX from the FTSE 100 is the fact that the, uh, the DAX is actually, the, the, the recent highs have actually managed to take out the, uh, the highs of the middle of August. So we're at now levels that not last seen uh, since very much early August. Uh, so kind of, you know, talking about a one month high, not too far away from a one month high on the DAX. If you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the kind of psychologically important 12,000 metric. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play in around 12,080. We can see here on a few occasions that act as resistance and support and support here not too long ago. Once again, if the metric has been, uh, have been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so in the future. And should we see a, a, a size of break beyond the 50 moving average, we could be looking at heading back up toward this genuine area in around kind of 12,400. Similar though, if the market uh, takes it as a, as a sharp move lower uh, and we fall back below the 20 moving average at 11,674 and heading back, heading back below 11,600, it could take us back down for this area here in around 11,270. Take a look at what's going on on the Dow Jones over the US. So the US markets were in better shape than, the, uh, than their European counterparts when they, when they, they had a fairly sharp sell-off um, going into, uh, in, into early August. We can see a nice series here, one, two, three, of... of um, of higher lows so the market was kind of was in the first few weeks of august didn't really manage to kind of make any higher highs but it was making a clear series of higher lows so again that was giving an early indication that the market even though it wasn't driving higher it wasn't going any lower either um so the market did manage to kind of the highs of last friday did manage to kind of take out the highs of, of, uh, of early august uh, it's pulled back ever so slightly, but, but things, and we're not too far away from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, but things are looking relatively good um, for the um, for the for the Dow Jones. And if you can hold above the kind of 26,000 mark, you know, big psychological number, we could look, you could look at retesting uh, the 50 moving average, which comes to play at 26,568. And if you go beyond that, uh, we could be looking heading up toward the 27,000 mark, and then if you go beyond that. We could be retesting the all-time high. Uh, if, the man, if the market does manage to kind of turn over, turn over on itself again, we could be looking heading back towards this red line here, the Tuesday moving average at 25,643. And if you go below that, we could be looking heading down toward these levels here, the, the level last seen in kind of um, late and mid August, in around the kind of um, 12,000. Sorry, apologies, uh, 25,280 region. Having a look at the S&P 500, similar situation on the S&P 500 to the Dow Jones, also that the price action has been fairly similar, whereby the highs of Friday uh, very briefly eclipsed the highs uh, that were achieved in the mid, mid and early August. Um, so the market also has a nice series of um, you can see a nice series of higher lows along here. So that, so that, so that it would appear that this upward trend is going to continue, and if that is the case. Uh, we could be looking at retesting uh, this blue line, the 50 moving average at 2,944, and a size of break above that could, have, could kind of take us back on, 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 uh, on track up towards the uh, 3,000 mark. If you do, however, manage to kind of turn lower and move to the downside, we could be looking heading back towards this, this zone here in around 2,850, and if we have a decent break below that, it could take us back down toward this red line, 
the trading moving average, which comes into play uh, at 2,000, sorry, 2,808. So a lot of the uncertainty we've seen in equity markets in the last few weeks uh, has been a bit major, has made a major of major benefit to gold. And gold only this day last week, last Monday, hit a fresh six-year high. Been, he was hitting quite a number of, six, of new six-year highs and it hit his latest six-year high uh, last Monday. So it's in very much a solid upward trend. If you're kind of, we're currently trading at 15, 23, 15, 24. If you look at the press on higher from here, we could be looking, looking at retail, heading back up towards the um, 1555 metric and a move beyond that would make it more likely that we'd actually continue on up towards the kind of 1560, 65 mark. Um, any kind of move to the downside uh, in gold could see support come into play in around this area here. The you know psychologically important 1500 mark, maybe just below that in at, uh, at kind of 1492, 1493. And even if you go below that, uh, support can be found from this zone here in around 1480. And as we can see, uh, in recent months we've seen a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Classic upper trend. So buying on the dip has been a popular strategy. So if we do manage to drift, drift, drift lower in the gold market, we could see fresh buyers enter the fold. Um, sticking with the commodity theme, looking at Brent crude oil now. So obviously oil has been one of the markets that's been impacted um, by the US-China trade um, situation, particularly now that, that um, the US, sorry, apologies, that, that China is, impo is imposing tariffs on US oil, um, on US oil being imported into China. Um, the concerns about the, the global economy have also, have also added to concerns that the um, demand for, for oil will be will, uh, will, 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 will drop in the next few months and uh, the next few weeks and months. Uh, so if you take a look here. The oil market has been, the price per market has been in a uh, fairly clear, clear downward trend. Even though in recent weeks we have managed to press higher, and we've seen a series of of, um, of higher lows, the market has managed as can we kind of fail to kind of take out the highs of early of kind of mid August. And essentially, while we remain below this red line here, the trading moving average, which comes to play just just in around sixty four dollars and twenty three cents. While we remain below it, it's likely that the, more kind of more, the wider downward trend of recent months is going to continue. And if you look to press on the from here, we could look heading back down toward this area here, down around $56 a barrel. And if you have a size of break below that, it could take us back down towards $52 a barrel. But if you do manage to get a press on higher from here, and uh, we do manage to can continue the kind of slightly upward trend that we've been seeing um, in, in recent kind of recent couple of weeks. We could be looking at retesting this zone here, the uh, the trendy moving average, and notice how it acted as for a decent resistance uh, in late July. And if the metric acted as resistance in the past, it makes it likely that it will do so in the future. But if you do manage to take about take out um, the trendy moving average, we then could be looking at retesting this area here, and that comes to that like that's the um, the highs of, of, of uh, early July, or sorry mid July rather, and that's in around the sixty eight dollars and eighteen cents mark. Taking a look at WTI. So WTI, um, broadly speaking, in recent months, especially since uh, for the last say, five or six weeks, been a fairly clear example of, of, of downward trend. You know, nice, nice series of um, of lower highs along here. Granted, we, we have seen a couple of um, we have seen um, the lows of, of late August didn't take out the lows of early August, so the market is kind of pressing higher. But it's almost like it's going to deciding which way it's going to turn next. But ultimately, if it holds below these this, these levels in here in around fifty-seven dollars, it's likely that that the kind of the kind of more recent wider downward trend is going to continue. And if it kind of fall below these areas here and take out the recent low in around fifty-three, it could take us back down toward this area here, down around the fifty bucks per barrel zone. Uh, if the market does manage to kind of break above the kind of fifty-seven metric. We could be looking heading up towards the kind of 60 or up to um, 60.83 mark up around here. Coming on to um, some currencies, the euro versus the US dollar, first off. So we've seen a continued weakness in the uh, the euro versus the dollar. Um, we fell back to kind of, you know, multi-year lows on Friday. The lows of today have managed to take out, have managed, managed, managed to take out those lows again. So now back at levels, not seen, I think it's about May 2007. So levels not seen since May 2007. It's an indication of how weak 
the uh, euro dollar market is. So it's in a nice, it's in a pretty clear cut example of a downward trend. And we're currently in at, at one spot 09.58. And if we continue to kind of press a lower from here, we could be looking at kind of hitting down towards the one spot 09 mark. If we did manage to bounce back, we could, so resistance could be found in around the one spot 11 mark. But we'd really need to be taking out this area here in at one spot 11.64, the highs of, uh, of, of late August. If you want to get any kind of standard chance of heading back up towards um, the highs of early August in at one spot mid 12, sorry, one spot 12 49 in around this zone here. And lastly, we'll take a look at the British pound versus the US dollar. So, pound dollar has been a very clear example of a downward trend. Um, the market, you know, we did, did stage a bit of a bounce back here uh, between. Kind of early August to uh, to late August, but the market appears to be turning over on itself yet again. It was simply kind of pressing lower, and if you look to drive lower from here, we could be looking heading back down to kind of towards the, uh, the the one heading down towards 120. If you do, however, manage to kind of press on higher from here, uh, we, we could run into resistance potentially at this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes into play at one spot 23.36. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around the kind of one spot 24 region. We did see a bit of consolidation in that area previously, so it makes it more likely it will be of importance in the, in the future. Uh, that's all for me in, in relation to this video. Um, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review and a few reviews. Thank you very much.